Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are husband and wife and we'd like to welcome you to Teradice. And if you've been watching board game news recently, or maybe we just live in this bubble and we've heard this, but Klaus Tuber, the designer of Catan, originally Settlers of Catan, has passed away at the age of 70. Yeah, so Catan is a very well-known board game in the board game world and beyond mm -hmm. that as well. And so today we just really want to talk about his legacy and his impact on the board game world. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in learning about, then just keep watching. So if you're like most people, you probably got into board games in the last like 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, so at least modern tabletop board games. We've all had Monopoly and Life and Clue and those classics, but it was in the early 90s when Settlers of Catan was introduced. This was Klaus's fourth game. He'd actually designed three others in the 80s uh, that all won the Spiel des Jahres Award because there were like four board games out then. That was um, good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Catan is definitely his most well-known and well kind of recognized uh, globally, which has now sold over 40 million copies as of this year. That is crazy. I think there's only like 20 million of Ticket to Ride, and that was what I always considered to be yeah. one of the biggest. Uh, but essentially, like, uh, he, at the time he was a dental technician, he was making like, you know, implants, mouth guards, things like that. Uh, and he said, you know, I think I can make a living off of this. And he became a full-time board game designer. And that is like, a mind-blowing concept for like the 90s like there were not many full-time board game designers mm -hmm. yeah he's really yeah. one of the first ones that did it and then, so it was very cool and then um so it was originally published through cosmos, cosmos yep right. our big german publisher like mm -hmm. if it's a german game it's probably published by cosmos yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he started his own studio Catan studio a couple years later uh where he publishes much of his things from there now yeah and mm -hmm. so i think it's just so most people, I, like when we say um, you play tabletop board games, people will be like, oh, like Catan. And so I, it's definitely become <laughs> this like thing where everyone knows it. And it's like, I was introduced to it in college and um, it was one of the first ones I played. And a lot of yeah. people, that's what the first one that gets them in. We call it in the board game world, like it's your, it lets a lot of people's gateway game. Mm -hmm. um, now I know on this channel before I've made fun of Catan cause it's a farming game and I make fun of that theming <laughs> but I cannot yeah. deny the impact it has had and the positive experience mm -hmm. it's given to so many people too and it really we were doing some research like about like the mechanics it really like like came up with that have led to so many other games you yeah, know? yeah yeah I mean so we've played it before and we know how it works but I started to think about like what actually originated from Catan yeah and I think some of the things that may have existed in pockets, but just like all came together in this very modern board game is number one, uh, it's probably one of the first games that had like a modular setup. So you have these hex tiles, which were pretty new concept. Uh, they're put out in a random organization every game, which added a lot of replayability because uh, essentially you have to have a different strategy each time just based off of geography. Then it added in a bartering mechanic, uh, but more than that, the way that resources get added to the pool is on every person's turn, there's a chance you're getting more resources. So the people you're bartering with is changing from turn to turn, it means you have to stay focused even when it's not your turn. So you can't zone out and then come back on your turn because you're probably gonna get traded with and get new resources before it's your turn mm -hmm. again. Um, so those are like two very newish things. Uh, and then the concept of like, I'm gonna build my settlements and my roads here and connect my network. Uh, it's, it's very much like mixing that strategy and luck in ways that like previously weren't seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then outside of like, D&D &D and Magic Gathering and stuff like that, to Catan was like one of the first ones that like introduced the concept of like having a gaming group, like wanting to play mm. <laughs> with the same types of, with the same group of people, not types, but like you want to play with the same group of people and you want to play the game over and over again to improve your strategy and you want everyone at the table to know mm -hmm. the rules and to jump in. Yeah, because it's so dependent on trading, mm -hmm. it really depends on, oh, uh, you know, they get the concept of I get something in return because yep. a lot of new players are like, I don't want to trade with you, I like my sheep. <laughs> yeah, so Katan was yep. really like the first like tabletop game that did that. Mm -hmm. And I think it, why, like we're discussing, why did Catan catch on? Why did it become popular? I think that it, I think it's farming theme actually lended itself to that because at the time there were lots of like the D&D &D and the Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that and like fantasy. I think it's like want to trade some sheep. I think it lended itself to a broader <laughs> audience just yeah. wanting to like play it and like be like college kids to play it. I don't know. It did. Get I less like, goblins and trolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt like the gates were open more for like people to play it, which is really cool. 
Now you're talking about like people like in the like oh maybe people don't know this because it's not like in the board game world. But what I was surprised and really amazed is how much this headline of his passing unfortunately made such a big splash like in the news and an announcement like when yeah. i was at the bank i saw it as a headline going across mm. it and i just think that's pretty incredible that we've come that far in like board games that it's like his legacy is able to be like heard around the world and like yeah. it's like it really means like a lot to a lot a lot of people this yeah. game yeah. and it was a bit unexpected when board games like kind of exploded again in the late 90s early 2000s because that was when like nintendo and like all these other yeah, things are picking up game renaissance. why would yeah. i play a board game when i could play video games yep. um so i think like it's it's just really cool to see that it's broken through and it's it's where we are now yeah mm -hmm. so that like it, we really appreciate and really honor his life and the, his contribution to mm -hmm. the board game space. Um, and Catan always has a special place. And so, um, yeah, uh, that's kind of a debrief summary of his life and the impact of Catan. Um, I hope you guys go and play around the Settler of Catan in honor of him. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we put out a new video. And we'll see you next time. Happy playing. Got any sheep?